Greetings students, this is Mr. Greason, and today we're going to have our first sounds on the flute. The flute is a, um, is a different woodwind instrument in that there's no reed, it doesn't go in your mouth, and so therefore the, the way to create the sound is a little bit different than like on a saxophone or a clarinet. So the things that you're going to need are obviously going to be the flute, and you're also going to need some um, uncooked rice. All right, and the reason why is because we'll uh, do some uh, what I call rice spitting uh, to help demonstrate how the sound needs to be created, how the air needs to be shaped to make a good sound on the flute. For creating that first sound on the flute, I use, the, I use a combination of the words to and poo, with all with that oo sound at the end. And the way we, kinda, no, way we normally say to, our tongue's a little bit higher up in our mouth, right above the gum, gum line, in this case, we're going to say two with your teeth right, with, sorry, with your tip of your tongue right behind your top teeth. So it'll be like this, two, two, two. All right, now go ahead and try that. Now go ahead and say poo. Now what we're going to do is put those two words together, which is a little bit weird, but it makes sense. Trust me. And it goes like this, poo, poo, poo. All right, T poo. It's weird. Poo. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and try to, what you're going to do is going to start off four counts of air. We're just going to take away the oo, and we're just going to start it with that. So you take that t-poo and that oo mouth shape, but you don't actually say oo. You take the vowel out so it doesn't activate your vocal cords, all right? So it'll be like this. All right, try that on your own with me. One, two, three. Great. Now you need some rice. Got some rice here. Now, what we do with the rice is you hold the grain of rice horizontally, straight across. And I'll kind of get close to kind of so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, and you're going to kind of just hold it with your lips, in in line with your lips. All right, and how it's going to work is how it's going to work is you're going to do that same T poo just with letting the air go and you'll end up just spitting the rice right out in front of you. So we like this. All right, try it again. All right, straight across so you guys see how it works. All right, I'll do it one more time. right out in front. All right, take a moment and try that on your own. All right, now what you need to do is get out your, uh, get out what's called the head joint of your flute. This part of the flute is called the head joint. All right, this part right here is called the embouchure hole. There's a hole right in the top of it. And this is called the embouchure plate or the lip plate because your lip goes right up against it. The way this works is the opening for the instrument goes to your right. All right, so when you play a flute, it's out like this. Because the transverse flute, as it's called, it's not a it's not a symmetrical instrument where it's like, because your body, so one half of the body's not the same as the other. It's a little bit like a, a string instrument like violin uh, or a viola or, um, uh, or, the, or, 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 uh, or the horn, very similar, where it's kind of like off to one side of the body. So the flute, the opening of the head joint will point off to your right. All right, so. Let's try that T-poo syllable again with just air. Try that with me. One, two, three. All right. Now, to make sound on the head joint, well, first, to align the head joint, the space that, that the hole in between your lips that you play with is called the embouchure hole. All right? Or sorry, the aperture. This is the embouchure hole. The aperture is what's between your lips, and aperture means opening. All right? So... What you're going to have is the aperture pretty much goes right across, it goes right up against, not up against, but the, the, the embouchure hole on the head joint just points up. The aperture lines up with the embouchure hole right there, all right? And the best way to, or not the best way, but the way we kind of get some air started on the head joint is to take your right hand, cover the end, and then try to make a sound with that T-poo. 
All right, I'll demonstrate. Now you may get that. You also may, if you put your, if you push your air too fast, you may get this. That's okay as well. We're not going to go for that upper register yet. All right, but it goes like this. Let's try that together. I'll give you four counts. The fourth count, the last count is silent. You breathe in on one, two, three. All right, now let's do two two count tones. All right, notes that are two counts are called half notes. Typically, there are two counts. So we're going to do two of them. All right, so we're going to just go. There'll be no breath in between. You're going to use one stream of air. So just like we used one stream of air to do four counts, we're going to do one stream of air to make to make four counts as well. But just our tongue is going to make that that t poo syllable right in between after two counts. I'll demonstrate. One, two, three. All right. Let's try that together. One, two, three. All right, let's try it again. One, two, three. Now, with flute, you might not get the sound out right away. It might sound like this. All right, if you're kind of getting like an airy sound, all right, it probably has to do with that getting that T-poo, that all right. I, every single time I've had a student um, be able to successfully get the tipu syllable and spit out the rice, they've been able to get a sound on the flute. Just like that, all right? That's how we need to get sound in the head joint. It's so important to get that tipu syllable to get the sound out, all right? Next, we're going to try four one-count notes. So we're still going to have four counts of air one steady stream of air but it's going to be four tones on one stream of air you're going to feel like uh, you're doing sit-ups because you, your core muscles are going to be energized they're going to be activated to keep the, to keep the air moving fast you may have played recorder before recorder uh, air for the recorder is nothing like air for the flute because air on the recorder is very soft it's kind of like like you're fogging up a mirror for almost the entire register of the flute, it's not that. It's faster air. It's cooler air with that T poo syllable. All right, so we're going to try four what we call quarter notes because four quarters is a whole, right? Or, all right, we're going to put those together. So I'll demonstrate. All right, let's try it together. One, two, three. Good. Let's try it again. One, two, three. All right. Fantastic. All right. You try that a little bit on your own. And next, we're going to put together the head joint with the body of the flute. All right. So we've tried that. We've made our tipu sound. We've played some quarter notes and half notes and a whole note on the head joint. If you take your hand off the end, by the way, it makes a different sound, but it's not as well controlled, which is why we close up the end of the head, the head joint. All right, so this is our head joint. All right, so we're back. So this is a more of a student model flute. All right, it's shiny because it's pretty new. And so we have thumb keys here, and then you have the keys along the, along the, along the tube. All right, so we'll take the head joint. Now, how this works is you should see it just there may be a line on your head joint where the plating ends all right um, so how that works is you just push the head joint into the barrel all right you should never have to put anything on it like you may you, all right you grip the keys or you grip the barrel and you just push and twist you don't need to push the head joint all the way in you shouldn't push the head joint all the way in now we have the embouchure hole the embouchure hole should line up with these first couple of with these first couple of keys. All right, so that's how that works. Now, how uh, the flute is a flute is an instrument that is uh, one of the challenges of it is 
well, a couple of the challenges in it. One is obviously making a sound. We've kind of covered that already with our tipu syllable. The other is holding it. So I break down holding the flute. There's another part to the flute that we haven't looked at yet. So I break down holding the flute into a couple of stages to make sure we can hold it right, get our left hand where it needs to be, and then and then we graduate to putting the putting the foot on the flute. All right. So what you're going to do? Hold the flute up, hold hold the flute up and down with your left hand. Take your right hand, bring it across, grab the barrel. All right. So now you're holding the the embouchure plate is facing away from you. All right. And then what's going to do? What's going to happen is you kind of hold the flute out in front of you, bring it to you. All right. Pointing out to the side. All right. So what we're going to do is we're just going to Hold it to our face, and we're going to try those four quarter notes with that T Poo syllable again. All right? One, two, three. Good. Let's try that again. One, two, three. Great. Now, here's what our left hand needs to do. All right? Hold the flute out in front of you like this. Good. Take your left hand. Left hand comes over from the side. Now, you have some keys that we have to figure out where we need to put our fingers on the flute. Okay? This very first thing, nothing goes here. This is where the first finger goes. All right? Now, occasionally you have you have uh, people that can't sit next to each other because they cause sorts of, all sorts of trouble. All right? These are the first and second fingers of the flute. They are the troublemakers. If they sit next to each other, the flute doesn't work. They cause trouble. So the first and second fingers can't sit next to each other. There's got to be someone in between them. All right? Third finger right here. So we have first finger, second finger, third finger, and then the pinky kind of hangs out here. Now, what your thumb does, all right, and I'm going to come around this back, your thumb hangs out here, all right, on these two keys. All right? I start flute players using this key. So we're going to put the flute, we're going to put our thumb here. The flute, the thumb, does not, I repeat, the thumb does not hold up the weight of the instrument. All right? The, what, the part of the finger that holds up the weight of the instrument is this part of the first finger. That's what holds up the, uh, that helps hold up the, left, the, the, the weight of the instrument. So we're going to put our hands in place. We're just going to put our first, second, and third fingers down and our thumb on this, on this key that's, close, that's the, closer to the top. All right? And we're going to bring the flute back into position. All right, and we're gonna try those four notes again. One, two, three. All right, let's try that again. Remember, all three of these keys are down. You gotta make sure to close the keys, all right? If the keys aren't closed, the instrument won't work right. Let's try it again. One, two, three. Now, you've got um, you've got your hand here, all right? Try to bring it in so that the flute sits on that part of your hand, all right? I was kind of doing this, all right? The flute's going to want to rest here. Your hand comes under here, all right? All right, so we're going to hold it like here. Now, do me a favor. Wiggle your thumb, all right? Your thumb should be able to move freely, all right? Now, we're going we're gonna to learn two notes in this position. We're going to learn a note. G, which is what we just played, all right, and then we're going to take away a finger, and the note and that's one note higher than G, so it's the next note up in the musical alphabet is A. All right, so let's try that. Let's play four A's together. One, two, three. Good, let's try that on G, four Gs. One, two, three. Good, all right, so the next thing we're gonna do is what I call, or working towards what I call the two note samba. All right, so we're talking about the two note samba, all right? So on A, which is, you're gonna hold, this is always a great, great way to check on things, is to hold the flute out in front of you. So right now, right hand barrel grip, left hand, all right, and first finger here, not here. These fingers don't get along, so they need someone in between them. And then the thumb on this, on this fat key right here. All right. So, and then the the if you bring your hand up like here, all right. So here's here's the hand, fingers. If I bring my hand, if I 
curve my hand up like this, then all of a sudden my, my third finger likes to be right here, my pinky's right here. And then we bring the flute into position and we, are, we already have great hand position. All right, so repeat after me. Two, 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 two. Two, 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 two. All right, we're gonna try that on A. All right, so we have these two fingers. One, two, plus the thumb, all right? So I'll demonstrate first. All right, let's try it together. One, two, three. Do it again. One, two, three. Great, now let's add a finger. One note lower than A is G, so this is G. All right, let's try it. One, two, three. Try it again. One, two, three. All right, that's on one stream of air. One of the reasons why I like the two-note samba is because it's almost impossible to go <laughs> try to breathe in between each one. You're gonna pass out for and hyperventilate. One breath is that is all you need for the two-note samba. All right, good. Now we're going to use two notes. All right, repeat after me. A, A, G, A, 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 G, G. Go ahead. A, A, G, A, 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 G, G. All right, say it again. Ready? And A, A, G, A, 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 G, G. Now let's try playing it. All right, so. We have our we have our we have our barrel grip here. I'm gonna call this barrel grip from now on. It makes sense. All right. We have our first finger here, second finger here. Remember, they don't get along, so they need someone. They need a space between them. And third finger here. We curve the hand up so that this part of our finger is touching the body of the flute, and we bring it into position. All right. And we're gonna try the two note samba. Try that with me. One, two, three. All right, try it again. One, two, three. Great. Now, what I want you to do is kind of move your air a little bit faster and think a little bit more ooh with your with your tea poo and think about spitting that rice about four feet in front of you. And what's going to happen is the air is going to pop, it, the notes are going to go uh, what we call one octave higher. So it's still A and G, but it's higher. Can we try that together? One, two, three. One, two, again. One, two, last time, and. Great, all right. So there's gonna be four notes that we're gonna learn how to play with, with, with in, in the barrel grip, all right? And that's what we'll cover in some of our next lessons, all right? Thank you very much for playing, good luck.